On one second here. Be ready to be entertained, informed, and, uh, and uh, have a little fun. There we go. Hello and welcome to another edition of my show. Uh, hey, well, whoa, 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 we are live. We are live here on uh, on Twitch. The most reliable, actually, oddly enough, we are the most reliable um, place you can get my show because all of the other uh, all of the other platforms have kind of failed me, including Facebook. Unfortunately, Magabook, we've had some problems with, but uh, hopefully, we'll get that figured out very soon. Yo, yo, yo! So, let me ask you this. Are you ready to give up the fight? Today, a friend of mine named Sam at work is ready to bend over and take it for Joe Biden. And I say, uh, no, no. I also saw a uh, interesting piece today, uh, an opinion piece that said the only reason you and I, the only reason you and I are saying that uh, this election should be contested was because of Newsmax. No, as I've said, the reason why we are contesting this election is because we're not stupid. We're not stupid. We are not going to uh, sit here and take this. We're not going to effing take it. That's it. We know when we're being lied to, when we know when we are being fooled, and when you look at places like, uh, well, uh, news uh, organizations like Fox News and others, <clears throat> and uh, and Mitt Romney, who is a just a giant piece of crap, the biggest regret of my life, I think, is is uh, voting for Mitt Romney. What a what a wretched, awful human being. <clears throat> I'm, I'm gonna have to say George Bush is right up there too, because he's a piece of sh- he. You know, he. Uh, mm, 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 mm. But we're not stupid. We're not effing stupid. And to Fox News, we're not stupid. Yeah, but we need proof. We need this and we need this. Yeah, we're going to get proof, but I'm going to tell you, we're not goddamned stupid. And I don't like to use that kind of language, but we are not stupid. We watched the election night as Donald Trump began to take things, carry things away. He, he, we began to kick butt. He, he was out in front in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Pennsylvania by 800,000 votes. And then all of a sudden, four states stopped counting votes. And massive amounts of, uh, of ballots were poured in, all oddly enough, in the favor of Joe Biden. And by God in heaven, if you were on the opposite, uh, opposite side of the political persuasion, you would say, wow, this is F. We're not stupid. So I'm going to get to a lot of stuff tonight. And I thank you for joining me. You'll see up here my uh, T-shirts and swag line. uh, America Supremacist, among other things. Cancel Fox News. All of those are available at tpublic.com. Look for conservatives, okay, guys? Appreciate it. So uh, last night, Tucker Carlson, and he, he's kind of like the last bastion of sanity, I guess, on Fox News. Other than uh, um, Sean Hannity, I, I don't care about Laura Ingram. I don't particularly care for Laura Ingram. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cancel that because I'm on the air. But anyway, uh, Laura Ingram, I don't particularly, I don't really pay attention to her. Uh, I, you know, I mean, she's okay. Just doesn't do much for me. I like, I like Mr. Hannity. He gets a little repetitive. I like Tucker Carlson. And so today when I heard Tucker Carlson going after uh, Sidney Powell, uh, I went, A2, Tucker? Here's what he said last night about Sidney Powell yesterday during the uh, presser where a Rudy Giuliani, who, God dang it, I mean, honestly, Rudy Giuliani, great guy, uh, you know, I appreciate his legal expertise, but if you are standing there sweating your ass off and you can't put a thought together and you have dye from your hair coming down your face, come on, man, in the words of Joe Biden, what are you trying to do, Rudy? Come on, 
back away and let the real leader take over. All right, let Sidney Powell take over. You looked like a buffoon. You made some great points yesterday, but come on. How do you expect us to, to win, to lead, when you are sweating your ass off, you look uncomfortable, and you've got, you've got dye leaking down the side of your face? You looked, honestly, I don't care what kind of, it's Richard Nixon in 1960 all over again. I wasn't alive then. But that's what it is. Rudy, back the hell up. You are a supporting cast member, all right? Sidney Powell is the leader. That's just the way it is. Rudy, love you. You are awesome. Back away. Here is Tucker Carlson talking about the fact that Sidney Powell wasn't ready to bear all yesterday during the presser. So that's a long way of saying we took Sidney Powell seriously. We had no intention of fighting with her. We've always respected her work. We simply wanted to see the details. How could you not want to see them? So we invited... Because here's the deal. You don't unveil everything you have in a court cost, uh, or, or court case in the media. You wait until you're in front of the court. You present presenting arguments in front of the media. Tucker, settle down. And Sidney Powell on the show. We would have given her the whole hour. We would have given her the entire week, actually, and listened quietly. He just... As much as I love Tucker, you sound kind of shrill. The whole time at rapt attention. That's a big story. But she never sent us any evidence, despite a lot of requests, polite requests, not a page. When we kept pressing, she got angry and told us to stop contacting her. When we checked with others around the Trump campaign, people in positions of authority, they told us Powell has never given them any evidence either, nor did she provide any today at the press conference. Powell did say that electronic voting is dangerous, and she's right. We're with her there. But she never demonstrated that a single actual vote was moved illegitimately by Saul. That's a really nice picture of her, by the way. Another. That's a really nice picture uh, of her on Fox News. That's, that's really, really nice of Fox to make her look as bad as possible. Uh, honestly, Tucker, a two Tucker, really, really, really. Here's what Sidney Powell had to say about Tucker Carlson. All right, Sydney, I, I want you to respond to what Tucker Carlson said last night, Sydney. I don't know if you watched it, but uh, Tucker Carlson said that uh, he had invited you on his show to share evidence of uh, the software flipping votes. Uh, and he, he said you got angry and refused to provide evidence for your claims of voting software flipping votes. How do you respond to Tucker Carlson? Did you get angry with the show because they texted you and asked you to please provide evidence of what you're uh, alleging? Uh, no, I didn't get angry with the request to provide evidence. In fact, I sent an affidavit to Tucker uh, that I had not even attached to a pleading yet uh, to help him understand the situation. And I offered him another witness who could explain the mathematics and statistical evidence uh, far better than I can. I'm not really a numbers person. You'll notice this headshot doesn't make her look terrible. But he was very insulting, demanding, and rude, and I told him not to contact me again in those terms. Okay. Bye-bye, Tucker. Bye-bye. You know, I don't know what to expect, guys. I, I don't know um, what to believe. I know that common sense, and uh, common sense is not very common anymore would dictate that Donald Trump was leading dramatically. Uh, Donald Trump had giant Trump rallies and caravans. Donald Trump was uh, leading as far as everything with regard to policy. And uh, Joe Biden hid in his basement, and he's, I mean, dear God in heaven, I, I actually had a, a ex-friend, I guess, now of mine say that, um, uh, she didn't understand why I would consider Joe Biden to be of declining mental health. And this is a mental health professional. And I went, wow, really, really, really? Let me give you an example of Joe Biden just in a presser yesterday. Hold on. Uh, here we go. This is, this is Thursday, uh, the first Biden bumble. They talked about that in some detail. Thirdly. We discussed the need to help states with Title 32 funding for the National Guard. He's reading! National Guard, that's a fancy way of saying governors, governors need to be able to get funding. He's reading. When they just watch 
his eyes. But when they dis- they need to uh, and, and bring, bring their National Guard into play. Here and, is uh, the Biden bumble number two from yesterday. We talked a lot about with the governors about what the immediate needs are. I'm going to we're going to impose the we're going to enforce the excuse me, employ the Defense uh, Reconstructed Act to be able to go out there and dictate companies build and do following things. We need much more testing. We need much more masking. We need more. We need gloves. I asked them. We need to promise and we need to promise. We need to say things are going to get better. We need to promise some more. We need to say all of the things that we have said for the last 47 effing years and we never do a effing thing. That's Joe Biden. That is Joe Biden. Let's move on. I am uh, quite simply tired of uh, being told that I have to defend common sense and reason. Quite simply tired of being told that I need to defend common common sense and reason. Uh, I know... And you know what? Uh, National Review, suck it. Fox News, suck it. I'm not an idiot. I'm not an idiot. And I'm going to tell you right now, and uh, maybe I'm one of the last few that will say, it's not because of insanity. It is not because of uh, uh, some sort of conspiracy theory. It's because I know, because I have common sense, that Donald Trump won this election. And I will not accept Joe Biden as my president-elect. It's not because of Newsmax TV. It's not because of One America News Network. It's because I'm not a effing idiot. Here is, uh, uh, this is interesting. Uh, um, there's been a good deal of talk about a server being um, confiscated in Germany, which would, I would assume, say that there is some foreign interference in our elections with Dominion Software. Here is Sidney Powell confirming that apparently there were some, uh, and and we heard this the other day, and and if you're just tuning in, uh, uh, um, There were reports that um, uh, Louis Gohmert actually reported that um, there was a German server collected that showed uh, Donald Trump had won with 410 uh, electoral votes. Here is Sidney Powell confronting that. I believe this is with, uh, yeah, here, here she is talking about it. I don't know where they were on the hard drive. Oh, yes. They got it. During the press arc. Eight, ten months ago. There are clear crimes revealed. Where Rudy Giuliani, honestly, dude, you're like 70-something. Get rid of the hair dye. I mean, I do a little, just a little highlights, but I'm like 25 years younger than you. Didn't do anything with that. I don't know where they are now. Our country has had its ballots counted, calculated, and manipulated in a foreign country with a company controlled by friends of an enemy of the United States. What do we have to do to That's get actually true. the FBI to wake up? Maybe we need a new agency to protect us. I, <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. In terms, if, I, if, I, if I might speak for just a minute. Here comes Sid. Come on. In terms of the level of corruption we are looking at here, we have no idea how many Republican or Democratic candidates in any state across the country paid to have the system rigged to work for them. These people didn't do this just to take control. They make one heck of a lot of money off of it. Think about the global interests behind your own news organizations. Think about the pressure being brought to bear on from the social media companies to shut down free speech. On And by the way, on the day after the election, uh, all my Facebook pages were shut down completely with no explanation and no recourse. Any challenge to the election. This is a massive, well-funded, coordinated effort to deprive we, the people of the United States, 
of our most fundamental right under the Constitution to preserve this republic that we all cherish. It is of the greatest concern. It is the, it is the 1775 of, of our generation. I'm going to say the 1776. And, and beyond. Yes. Here is Sydney talking about the uh, the server in Germany. Joining us now by phone is Sydney Powell. She's a member, obviously, of the president's legal team. Also, General Michael Flynn's defense attorney, a great American, uh, one of the country's leading appellate attorneys. Uh, Sydney, first of all, thanks. I know you let's are move going forward. every which direction. Yes, Let, go let's, ahead. let's turn very. Let's turn it to Smartmatic and Demand. To be certified and nothing to be changed before the vote. There are any number of legal grounds on which the use of those machines has to be uh, stopped and the votes un un invalidated. And now, are you uh, are you pressing forward with legal action against them for those uh, those violations? Uh, not against the company and the software, but the suits will be against the election officials to invalidate the results of the election and force it to the legislatures and the Electoral College and then the Congress. And that's where it's going to happen. Necessary. There has been great controversy as well, as you know, about uh, reports of a raid uh, on a, a company. In, Here we go. A, uh, There's the money shot. A Cytel uh, in Germany, which held election data, presumably, uh, and a raid that was carried out by U.S. Uh, U.S. This is the Kraken. Forces, or so goes the report, although the, the forces themselves were not uh, clearly identified, uh, nor the event uh, uh, actually uh, proven. Uh, can you tell us what actually did happen there? And, Kraken! And what you do know. Well, I know that is one of the server centers there's also one in barcelona so it is related B -b -b barcelona related to the entire smartmatic dominion software operation smartmatic honestly anytime smart is putting something it, it's gonna suck like the smart car Have you seen those cars i saw one today i'm like how smart do you feel when you get hit by a truck in that little box we not smart do not know whether the good guys got the server not smart or whether the bad guys got them. Uh, being on the outside of the government, we simply don't. It's stupid, Matic. I might, might go, hey, uh, you know, they've already said they're stupid. The only thing way to go up is, is up, actually. No, I'm hoping it's the good guys, and if yeah. they have that, then there should be scads of evidence of, frankly, an international conspiracy, criminal conspiracy of the worst sort. And it's it, the presumption then that they had uh, the uh, the records on those servers uh, uh, of all of the votes that were processed uh, by Dominion or Smartmatic? Yes, the way it works, the mm. votes can be changed either on the ground as they come in. Mm. People can watch the votes stream in live. For example, there was a, a Dominion employee high up, high ranking at the Detroit Center the night of the election. He could have watched the votes come in live and manipulated them in that process. It could have run an automatic algorithm against all the votes, which we believe is what happened originally. And then the machines had to stop, then the recount or the counting had to stop in multiple places. And it did. And it did. Why? Why? And oddly enough, all of the votes that came in overnight were 100% pretty much for Joe Biden. Nothing to see here. Here is uh, uh, Fox's Kristen Fisher uh, after the presser yesterday where um, Sidney Powell and, uh, and uh, Rudy Giuliani with his hair dyed. Just let it go, dude. Let, just let it go. <clears throat> Here's Kristen Fisher of Fox News. Uh, wow, Fox News. Uh, how the mighty have fallen. Uh, giving in completely to the, uh, the anti-Trump narrative. Well, that was certainly a colorful news conference from Rudy Giuliani, but it was light on facts. So much of what he said was simply not true or has already been thrown out. No, no, it hasn't, actually. You, you need to investigate it. Out in court. And, uh, you know, Giuliani, he opened by making this really bold and baseless claim that... Uh, mm, there's uh, like thousands of affidavits. I wouldn't say they're baseless. 
a lot of this alleged nationwide voter fraud that he's referring to. God, Fox News sucks. To all came from one centralized place. He called it a nationwide conspiracy. Uh, and yet he failed to provide any hard evidence to back up that one specific claim. Now, the uh, equally insufferable, uh, and I've never liked Carl Rove. I've, he's always been wrong about everything. Uh, generally, there are uh, pundits, and, and I'm going to tell you, uh, I'm just this guy who does a show, and I'm right a lot of the time. I'm, I'm right a lot of the time. If you follow my track record, and I said COVID was bullshit, and and I and I said this uh, this election uh, results of Joe Biden winning are bullshit. But I mean, it goes back like years and years and years. I'm generally right about a lot of stuff, but more so than Carl Rove, who's an insufferable country club Republican, and Dana Perino, who's really cute, and but she's a George Bush appointee, and and honestly, uh, for lack of a better expression, she's in bed with that administration. Here they are talking about the uh, the presser yesterday where opening statements were presented uh, on behalf of uh, uh, Rudy Giuliani and the Trump campaign, but no proof was offered because it's the opening statements. Here is uh, the insufferably, honestly, mostly wrong Carl Rove and Dana Perino. Well, uh, Mayor Giuliani uh, said there was a centralized plot involving widespread voter fraud in big cities controlled by Democrats. But her hair looks fantastic. See, His? Oh, you know. The Powell said the plot was communist in origin, that it had come from Venezuela, uh, it involved Hugo Chavez, and that George Soros and the Clinton Foundations were key participants in, it, in the plot. These are serious, I think somewhat um, strange accusations, but serious, and now both uh, Mr. Giuliani and Ms. Powell. Her hair is so spectacular. Have an obligation. His, not so much. To go to court and prove them. Because we're, we're they, these are questions. Carl, you've been wrong about everything. The fundamental fairness of the of our. Get your whiteboard out. Say I'm a fraud. Presidential election and alleging that there are conspirators who worked in major cities in an organized effort to engage in widespread... And if you were curious, you'd look into it, but you're not because you are a tool of the Bush administration and George Bush bent over and took it a week and a half ago. ...spread voter fraud and then foreign agents and powerful Americans, namely Soros and the Clinton Foundation, were involved. So they've got an obligation to go to court and prove these. I love it. Or the American people will have every reason to question their credibility. So I'm, I'm not... Now we're already questioning yours. I'm going to say that they don't have proof, but they better come up with proof and go to court because these are serious allegations that basically say... I agree with that. Our election was manipulated by a combination of foreign and domestic actors and stolen. And that cannot be left just simply out there. It needs to be either proved or withdrawn. And the only way to do that is to take these accusations and go to court. Mayor Giuliani may be right that people who signed those affidavits don't want their names exposed, but by God, you cannot make an accusation like that without following it through by going to court and trying to prove it. If it's I completely agree. But there's also a thing called common sense. That's what I kind of look at, common sense. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on to other stuff. I want to talk a little bit about COVID. What are you going to do for Thanksgiving? What are you going to change for Thanksgiving? You're going to keep your family at home. You're going to limit it to 10 people. You're going to not sing. You're going to not have more than a couple of people from another family. Or another household, instead of having like your folks come down from wherever and wherever and wherever. I'm not. We got about 10 people coming. I don't plan on changing anything. We're not going to wear masks. We're not going to be afraid. What really sucks is that I have a mother in law who's like 75 years old. And she's been frightened into not coming here. She's convinced by going through Clinton, Missouri, which is not too far from here, because they have a supposed 50% uh, 
positivity rate that she will not stop anywhere. And listen, here's the deal. If, if she doesn't want to come, I understand. Because I don't want a 75-year-old woman who survived breast cancer to come here if there's a risk. But I'm a 55-year-old man who works out and is healthy. And I got kids here who are 20 and 15 and a wife who's a couple years younger than me and I'm not afraid. But the people who come to my house are going to enjoy Thanksgiving and we're not going to wear a mask and we're not going to socially distance. And it's it's bullcrap. It's bullcrap. This is interesting because... um, The governor of uh, New York is saying that you need to limit the number of people at your home to 10 people at Thanksgiving. Andrew Cuomo is a uh, totalitarian, and he's saying that you should only have 10 people at your house. There are three sheriffs in the state of New York, who are saying, you know what, screw you. We're not going to do it. And they are within their bounds constitutionally to say no. And honestly, I want you to think about this real quick, and, and I won't spend too much of your time. What other time in history do you remember... And I... I I think this is actually an apropos comparison. It's been abused over the years, don't get me wrong. But what other, other time can you remember people coming to your door, knocking on your door, asking how many people you had in your house? And if you had over a certain amount of people, they went in to find out who was there. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Who is going to discover if you have 10 people or more in your home? Who is going to discover if they were just one other household or two or three? See, I, I, I write political satire and I make comparisons and I try not to be too audacious or unrealistic in my comparisons. I realize that if you find people in your home right now who don't belong there, they won't be loaded into train cars and hauled off to death camps. But I also see Democrats coming forward and saying that there are people who need to be re-educated with regard to their support of Donald Trump after the election of Joe Biden becomes the president. We have seen uh, lists of people who should be punished for supporting Donald Trump. And we're seeing governors saying you can only have 10 people in your home. Do you see where I'm going? I don't think it's so out of bounds. So out of bounds that governors are saying in Washington, you cannot have a church service where there's singing. We have a governor in California who is saying you cannot be out past 10 p.m. You have to be in your house. Are you out of your goddamned minds? So I wouldn't say that uh, I'm being inflammatory in many ways, with regard to our freedom, what's allowed and what's not allowed. (sighs) This is a, uh, and there are many people who are trying to take away the holidays from you, including Thanksgiving. This is a (laughs) good morning BBC report on why 
Christmas needs to go bye-bye. There is no point in having a very Merry Christmas and then burying friends and relations in January and February. And we need to... There is what it's going to do. They're going to do because of Christmas and COVID. Think very seriously about Christmas and how we're going to spend it. It's, it's too dangerous a time and an opportunity for the virus to spread. I'm going to say, if ya, if ya, you little bastard. Um, why, why does COVID exist right now in such a dramatic fashion when it was dying, when, uh, when the, uh, morbidity factor was dropping dramatically? I'm going to say it again because Donald Trump is not, is, is refusing to concede the election and there are two vaccines on the way. And there are Democrat governors saying, we're not going to accept it until Joe Biden is the president. (laughs) This is nonsense. I have a piece that I want to share with you, and I think this is really good. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? This is a a Canadian um, virologist. And I want to share this with you. Because this is really powerful. Here it is. This is a Canadian virologist, and I want you to pay attention because I'm not going to spend much more time with you tonight. A credible person saying what me, and I've lost many friends because I've said this, that uh, this is bullshit. (laughs) This, This, honestly, if you believe this, You're a fucking moron. I'm sorry. If you believe this is going to save you, you're an idiot. (laughs) You are an idiot. If you wear this at work, you're an idiot. You're an idiot. (laughs) In in, 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 in states like California and Michigan and and Wisconsin and Minnesota and, and New York and all this, this was supposed to save you. You you should have been able to you should have been able to go to a restaurant and dine out, I guess, or whatever. But honestly, this was supposed to save you, and it didn't. All of the restrictions that that punished your children and ruined their lives, going to school and going to football practice and going to concerts and dining out and all this, it was all a lie. It was all a lie. This was all a lie. It, we're back to square one in these municipalities in these states. This is a lie. <laughs> this is a lie. This, what I'm doing right now, got me canceled from YouTube. That doesn't. <laughs> this got me canceled from YouTube. Because I said bullshit. My daughter's freshman year in high school was ruined. My son's junior year in college was ruined. Because even though their chances of survival of COVID are 99.997%. How many people do you know who have died of COVID? How many people do you know have seen pits of bodies and trucks driving around the streets, gathering bodies of COVID victims? How many hospital rooms are showing live shots of people hospitalized for this dangerous disease? Bullshit. Bullshit. Here is this uh, virologist from uh, Canada telling you what I've told you literally since February. Here we go. Sorry. To uh, S. Peterson. Here we go. Association. 
I was pre- previously an assistant professor in the faculty of medicine doing a lot of teaching. Doing his cred? I was the chairman of the Royal College of Physicians of Canada Examination Committee in Pathology in Ottawa. He's a big deal. But more to the point, I'm currently the chairman of a biotechnology company in North Carolina selling a COVID-19 test. And I might, you might say I know a little bit about all of this. The bottom line is simply this. Pay attention, kids. There is utterly unfounded public hysteria driven by the media and politicians. It's outrageous. This is the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on an unsuspect. I have said this from day one. This is not the Black Plague. This is something we've never experienced before. And it's not because of contagion. It's because it's 2020. Pay attention. Public. There is absolutely nothing that can be done to contain this virus other than protecting older, more vulnerable people. It should be thought of nothing more than a bad flu season. This is not Ebola. It's not SARS. It's politics playing medicine, and that's a very dangerous game. There is no action of any kind needed other than... By playing this or something like this, I was banned from YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. What happened last year when we got uh, felt unwell? We stayed home, we took chicken noodle soup, we didn't visit Granny, and we decided when we would return to work, we didn't have anyone need anyone to tell us. Masks are utterly useless. There is no evidence base for their effectiveness whatsoever. Paper masks and fabric masks are simply virtue signaling. They're not even... It's not even virtue signaling. It's broadcasting fear. That's what it's about. It's broadcasting fear. Well, effectively, most of the time, it's, it's utterly ridiculous. Seeing these unfortunate, uneducated people, I'm not saying that in a purchaser's sense. How many dozens of your friends have died? How many dozens of your friends have died? Because if this is the Black Plague, there should be many. Now, I will tell you that I know more people have died from AIDS. <laughs> not in the last few years. But I know more people who have died from AIDS and cancer and... COPD, my brother, then have died from this foe, politically motivated pandemic. Seeing these people walking around like lemmings, obeying <laughs> without any <laughs> knowledge base to put the mask on their face. Stay home, put the mask on. Don't sing if you're in California. You have to... Uh, <laughs> You you have to have a uh, a quarantine at 10 p.m. Honestly, in the state of California in purple zones, they're telling you you can't leave your house. You have to be in your house at 10 p.m. Dear God in heaven. Social distancing <laughs> is also useless because, wow. because COVID is spread by aerosols, which travel 30 meters or so. are farts. So before landing. Hold on. Enclosures. Everybody's dead. Have had. Such terrible... And I didn't really fart. I was just going you know, to play with you. ...intended consequences. They should, you, everywhere should be open tomorrow, <laughs> as was stated in the Great Barrington Declaration that I circulated prior to this meeting. And a word on testing. I do want to emphasize that I'm in the business of, te- of testing for COVID. I do want to emphasize that positive test results do not, underlined in NEON, mean a clinical infection. It's simply driving public hysteria and all testing... Shut the front door! ...should stop unless you're presenting to hospital (laughs) with some respiratory problem. I have been to the hospital near my house and and it should be overrun and I've done literally the last uh, the last eight months and it's never been overrun and if you think it is, you're an idiot. All that should be done is to protect the vulnerable <laughs> and to give them all. What? I've said this from the beginning. Protect those who would be harmed by it. Like with, uh, I don't know, pneumonia. 
in the nursing homes that are under your control. God. Give them all three to five thousand international units of vitamin D every day, which is vitamin D, vitamin D, which has been shown to radically reduce the likelihood of infection. Thank you. And I would remind you all that using the province's own statistics, he's talking about Canada, the province overall. The risk of death under sixty-five in this province is is one in 300,000. Shut the front door! One in 300,000. <laughs> You've got to get a grip on this. The scale of the response that you're undertaking, with no evidence for it, is utterly ridiculous, given the consequences of acting in a way that you're proposing. All kinds of suicides, business closures... Mm. Funerals, weddings, etc., etc. It's simply outrageous. Or children in high school, like my daughter, breaking down and saying, Where are my friends? Where is my ability to be on stage as a performer? Why can't my son play football? This is the sickest ever infraction on, on, on our freedom in the history of the effing world. And I'm done. I'm done. It's just another bad flu. And you've got to get your... It is. But because I said that, social media I was banned on YouTube I was banned on Facebook I was banned for saying that where are the pits and bodies where are your friends all dead from this why aren't you dead from it nonsense and this Done with it. Nonsense. All right, it's time for me to go. I greatly appreciate you joining me. Um, thank you for watching me. If you would, please continue to watch this show on uh, on uh, uh, rumble.com. Thank you. Also on uh, Magabook and on Parlor. Uh, I have been completely shut down from Facebook uh, YouTube is, uh, you know, intermittent. I do greatly appreciate you joining me, guys. God bless you. Um, it's frightening for somebody who exists as a media personality to be shut down completely by social media. But if you would, please watch my, uh, my show. Um, it is on Newsmax, and it's on the weekends on at 6 o'clock on Saturday afternoons or evenings on uh, NewsmaxTV.com, uh, Eastern Standard Time, and then on, uh, on Newsmax on Sunday at 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. So I appreciate you watching it, guys. Guys, you know what? We can't give up. You've got a lot of people saying you're nuts, you're this, you're that. And I honestly am not going to, I'm just going to punch back. I'm, on, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not going to be told that I'm this or that. I'm, I'm reasonable, uh, and I'm not going to be told by people who are unreasonable that what I'm saying is unreasonable or whatever. I'm not stupid. So have a glorious evening, guys. I will touch base with you before Thanksgiving. God bless, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.